Bent concrete and steel destroying what's supposed to be part of the future of urban planning. The pedestrian bridge collapsed at Florida International University just last week. And the E-Team's Kevin Berry explains how Cleveland has flirted with similar structures in the past, but doesn't have all that many yet. This pedestrian bridge on the towpath trail is one of the few Cuyahoga County has been involved with. For the most part, pedestrian bridges in the area have been purely speculation. Detailed but out of date renderings are all people in Northeast Ohio have of a bridge from downtown to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and an unbuilt towpath pedestrian bridge. Cuyahoga County engineer David Marquad says the reason for these bridges is simple safety, but they also make more areas of a community easily accessible. You don't have to jump in a vehicle, drive somewhere, park, go to an uh, a, a particular point of interest. The county's building downtown has a skyway connecting the parking garage to the building without walkers having to touch the street below. The Cleveland Clinic has a similar system of walkways so they can move patients from one building to another without braving the elements or a short ambulance ride. The clinic tells me the new pedestrian walkway looks towards the future. And once the development near campus is finished, 105th Street will get more busy as well as harder to cross. The general purpose of a pedestrian bridge is really to get the pedestrians from one point of interest to another. The company that designed that other Metro Parks bridge and the bridge by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame say those are still very early on and aren't even close to being built. In Cleveland, I'm Kevin Barry for the E-Team. All right, Kevin, thank you. The county tells us they haven't had any safety concerns about their pedestrian bridges. Cuyahoga County does inspect more than 500 bridges for cars, making sure they are safe for the traffic that passes over them. Coming up, is there new hope for Toys R Us? The toy CEO stepping up to save the bankrupt business. And does it give patients a new chance at life or false hope? What a bill just passed by Congress means for terminally ill patients. The time now is 640. Good morning on this Thursday. A lot easier of a drive for you this morning as you head to work, though. Do be mindful it could be an isolated slick spot or two from melted snow yesterday, refreezing overnight. Here's the breakdown for today. It will be cold and some sunshine out there may cause for some sun glare after about the 715 time frame. So heads up. Hey, speaking of snow, just to give you an update here, it has been a snowy March. In the first 21 days of February, we had about seven inches of snow. Here in March, almost 10 inches of snow. We get a break for the next few days, but I don't think winter's done with us just yet. The liquidation sales start in a few hours, but now a toy CEO is making an effort to buy hundreds of Toys R Us stores. Associated Press says the CEO of Brad Stalls is teaming up with some investors. He's pledging $200 million in financing. He wants to raise another $800 million or more in crowdfunding. A few hurdles here, including getting a bankruptcy judge to approve this. Let's talk about a new trend in baby names. Uh, it is going gender neutral. Uh, names like Royal, Salem, and Oakley are moving up on the list of popular baby names, but traditional names still rule. In 2018, the number one girl's name is Emma Liam for boys. Next, temporarily banned from buying guns, the new law in Florida that is being used there on a school shooter's brother. Then cutting back on extra waste, the E-Team goes behind the scenes of a business and it's pushed to help the environment. And as we head to break, Super Screen 5 is on so you can keep an eye on the current weather and traffic conditions. Back now, 645, a new Florida law is being used to try to keep the brother of an accused mass shooter from getting a gun. A county judge in Florida granted a protection order against Zachary Cruz. He's the younger brother of the suspect in the deadly Parkland High School shooting. He was arrested this week for trespassing at that very same school. The sheriff's office used part of the new Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act to get this order. It allows officers to temporarily seize firearms from someone they've taken into custody for an involuntary mental health assessment. Ultimately, though, it'll be up to a judge to make a final decision next month. Police in Sacramento shot and killed a 22 year old man in his grandparents backyard. He was holding nothing but a cell phone. Stephen Clark was trying to get into his grandmother's house through the back door Sunday. That's when officers shot him 20 times. 
The officers were looking into reports of a man breaking into a car and hiding in a backyard. We say Clark came at them with what they called a toolbar, but all they found was his phone. It was real quiet. He said, well, ma'am, you can't go back there. You can't go back there. I said, okay, I just waited till he walked out that door. I opened up that curtain. My grandson laid on that ground dead, and I came in there hollering and crying, and I told him, Papa, I said, Papa is dead. Papa, they killed Papa. That was the gunshots. They killed Papa. The officers involved in the shooting have been put on leave. The House has passed a controversial bill allowing terminally ill patients a way to get drugs not yet approved by the FDA. The right to try bill allows patients to ask for drugs that have undergone clinical trials and are currently under FDA consideration. Now opponents say this jeopardizes patient safety, but supporters say these medications are safe and patients don't have the time to wait around for the approval. The bill now heads to the Senate. All right, come check this out. The snow was so bad in Pennsylvania. At least one police department gave up on traffic reports. The Bridgeville Police Department updated road conditions on Facebook with this. Yeah, a map here. It says everyone crashed. You see all the red scribbled all over it too. They told everyone just stay home. That area got about eight inches of snow, by the way, yesterday. Mm. Yeah, they just they just keep getting pounded out there. Yeah. Four big storms for them. We had our own yesterday. We had some parts of southern Lorain County uh, picking up around eight inches of snow. Some parts of Medina County around five to seven inches of snow. So it was a messy morning for us yesterday. That is not the case this morning at all. Thankfully, the only thing you got to worry about, well, cold air and maybe some sun glare. And the cold is going to stay with us for a few days. Here's how it shakes out today. Hour by hour, we'll top out around 40. The typical high this time of year is 49. We're not going to see that, I think, until about Monday. So hang in there for a few more days. Most of us in the upper 30s to lower 40s today. The exception might be the far northeast part of our viewing area, mid to upper 30s. And that breeze is not going to help us out at all. It's going to wind up making it feel more. More like the lower 30s when you step outside. Live looking clear.